Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the basic MOSFET current mirror, uh, which is similar in structure to the basic PJT current mirror. It consists of two MOSFET transistors uh, with their gates connected. Uh, one of those transistors, transistor M1 in this figure, uh, is uh, diode connected. So that basically means that the drain is connected to the gate. Uh, and then the main idea behind the operation of any current mirror is that uh, you generate a reference current, hopefully a, a very accurate um, and stable reference current somewhere in your circuit, and then you mirror it um, at other places in your circuit. In this case, the reference current is being uh, originated in that current source IREF, which is just represented as an ideal current source. There are multiple uh, ways of possibly implementing IREF, but we'll just leave it uh, as a symbol for now. Uh, before we get into, into any particular practical circuits for it. And then uh, basically that IREF uh, runs through the diode connected transistor M1, gets mirrored into M2 and produces an output current I out um, uh, at the drain of M2. This entire circuit uh, can be represented as a current source itself of value I out. Um, and so I've, I've said this entire circuit is equivalent to just having an I out source. Uh, typically, there are two things that are important when we are designing any current source, two parameters that determine the performance of the current source. So two important parameters. To determine the performance of our current source, and those would be uh, first the accuracy, how close is that I out value to the nominal value that we are trying to design for, um, and in this case, it will be how close it is I out to the reference current that's the one that we are trying to mirror. Uh, that accuracy is also represented by the current transfer ratio. Um, which is the ratio of I out to I ref. And the second parameter is the um, output resistance of our current source. I'm going to call it R out, which is the resistance uh, basically looking into the output of the current source, because that's going to tell us how susceptible our current source is to loading effects. Um, ideally, we will want our out to be equal to infinity, as that will imply um, that I out is independent of the loading conditions. In other words, if I have my model for my current source uh, with a particular output resistance in parallel with my current source, so this will be the Norton equivalent circuit for my current source, um, I want that when I connect some load resistance to my circuit, R load, I want all of I out to flow through um, R load. In this case, I guess we're going to connect it. like this, for it to be a true Norton equivalent circuit, I want um, the full value of I out to flow through R load. Um, and that's only going to happen when my R out is equal to infinity or an open circuit. If R out has a finite value, then what I'm going to have is a current division, um, whereas the smaller the value of R out, the more of the current is going to flow through R out and the less current I'm going to get through my load. So... Ideally, if it's infinity, uh, my current flowing through the load will be independent um, of the loading conditions. All right, so um, let's, uh, let's analyze the circuit really quick. Uh, first thing that we notice is that M1 is forced into saturation. And the reason for that is because in order to be in the saturation region, if you remember, we needed for the VDS voltage, the drain to source voltage, to be greater than or equal to uh, VGS minus the threshold voltage. In this case, notice that the drain is connected to the gate, 
So VDS for transistor M1, VDS1 is equal to VGS1 since uh, they're, you know, both uh, terminals, the G and the D are tied together. Um, and obviously the source is the same. And therefore, is M1 is forced into uh, the saturation region by the circuit connections. We have that VDS1 is equal to um, VGS1, and that's greater than VGS1 minus VT. I'm going to assume both transistors have the same VT, uh, since I'm assuming go good matching. Um, so I'm going to make a note here, perhaps. Note, um, assume transistors are matched. And what does that mean? Well, that means that VT1 equals VT2. And um, mu n c ox 1 process parameters equals mu n c ox 2. Okay. Uh, I will have that the current for my transistor 1, in this case, ID1, since it is in saturation, it's going to be equal to 1 half uh, of kn squared, which will be mu n c ox, width over length, sorry, 1 half of, of kp, times vgs minus vt squared, the overdrive voltage squared. That will be the, the value of my id1. Uh, notice also that since I have zero current flowing into the gates of my transistor, uh, the current through this branch is equal to zero. So there is zero current flowing in there and zero current flowing into those gates. And therefore my id1 is also equal to i ref. I can put it up here. This is also equal to IREF. Now, since uh, my VGS are tied together, I mean, in the sources uh, and the gates of transistor M1 and transistor M2 are tied together, then I will have that VGS1 is equal to VGS2, or I can just refer to it as simply VGS. And that's why I've just written VGS uh, in my ID1 equation. Um, so I'm going to write M2 has the same VGS as M1. And therefore, my ID2 is going to be equal to one half of mu n c ox with over length vgs minus vt squared. Now, this equation assumes that uh, transistor M2 is also in saturation, so perhaps uh, we, we will need to make a note that this only happens as long as vds2 is greater than or equal to VGS2 minus VT, right? Or VGS minus VT, because we've already concluded that the VGS is the same for both transistors. So as long as my drain voltage at the output is sufficiently high to bring M2 out of uh, the trial region and into saturation, then I have that this is the expression for my current for ID2. Notice that uh, the process parameters mu and C ox are the same in both cases. Uh, the aspect ratios, though, width over length, is something that we have control over when we're doing IC design, is the geometry of the transistor. And so I'm going to uh, perhaps say, put a one and a two subscripts there, because they don't necessarily need to be matched. And sometimes we are going to use uh, different aspect ratios in order to get, uh, to scale the currents up and down in different branches of a mirror. Uh, but everything else is the same, VGS is the same, VT is the same, uh, and the process parameters are the same. 
Also notice that uh, my current ID2 is equal to my I out. Is what I have labeled as I out in my circuit. And so when I uh, calculate my uh, current transfer ratio, I out over I ref, what I am left with is that everything can cancels out except for my aspect ratios. With over length 2 divided by with over length of 1. And so that will be the, the current transfer ratio of my basic uh, MOSFET current mirror. Something to notice, again, it depends on the geometry of the device. So uh, if I wanted for both currents to be equal to each other, I just need to make their, their uh, aspect ratios the same. But sometimes I will want, oh, I, I want my current at the output to be uh, two times my reference current, three times my reference current, uh, even 2.5 times my reference current, I can easily set that up by, um, by setting the appropriate aspect ratios between my transistors. And normally that will be represented, let's say M2 um, is, has twice the size as M1, you will typically put, you know, a times two. So there will be a standard size in the circuit, and then you can represent uh, times something just implying that it is uh you know times two it is twice the standard aspect ratio times three it is three times the standard aspect ratio and so you should expect twice or three times the current flowing through those transistors um, another thing to notice is that uh, there is a benefit here with respect to the bjt current mirror because in the bjt current mirror the, the base currents uh, were not equal to zero. And so you will lose some accuracy because you had to take into account the base currents. And that's why we had come up with uh, the configuration for the base compensated current mirror uh, to compensate for those base currents. In this case, notice that there's no need for that because um, the gate currents are already zero. So note, um, more accurate than BJT mirror due to um, gate current being equal to zero. And the output resistance for the circuit is obviously going to be the output resistance looking into the drain of uh, M2, which is little r2. And uh, the way we calculated little r out 2 is uh, 1 over lambda times VDS. Or if you want to express it in terms of the early voltage, it will just be the early voltage over VDS. Even though normally with MOSFET transistors, it's more common to see the lambda. Now, um, in our calculation of I out over I ref, we didn't take into account the effect of, of VDS uh, in the current, in the output current. And we do know that there is an effect of VDS in the output current, right? If I wanted to represent the effects of VDS, little r o in I out, I could just plot the value of I out, which is um, ID2, versus VDS2. And it will look something like this. Um, for very small values of VDS, well, the transistor will not be yet in saturation. And so until VDS2 um, reaches the value of VGS minus VT, the overdrive voltage, the transistor won't enter saturation. But once it does, right? Once it does, we will expect the current to be constant with further increases in VDS, but we do know that if the output resistance is not infinite, uh, this current is going to increase slightly with VDS. I don't know if uh, that's easy to see. Maybe I should exaggerate it a little bit. So we have, I'll put it in blue, we have a slight um, slope there, slope equals 1 over R out, since R out is the uh, change in VDS versus ID, and, and um, in this case that the slope is current over voltage as opposed to voltage over current. 
Um, and the way that we model that effect, oh, I'm going also to mention by the time I enter saturation, I need to have a value of at least VGS minus VT. Um, we modeled uh, that the slope, that finite output resistance, uh, via the lambda parameter. And so our exact equation, and so um, modeling of finite R out into IDS equation. I will have that my I reference is equal to that expression I wrote before for IDS1 times 1 plus lambda VDS1, right? Um, I'm not going to write it the whole thing over, but basically I'm just going to write the ratio. Again, so I'm going to say I out over I ref. Will not be exactly equal to simply WL2 over WL1. But also, uh, since the expression for the current is multiplied times a factor 1 plus lambda VDS2 uh, divided by 1 plus lambda VDS1. And notice that even if the lambdas are matched, the VDSs don't have to be. And so this will be uh, a more accurate expression for uh, the aspect ratio, the transfer ratio. And, uh, and the R out, obviously, will just be 1 over lambda times VDS2. So I'm going to encircle that. As a result, I think the note is fairly important as well, so I'm encircling it as well. And then, obviously, this is a more accurate um, expression for the transfer ratio. And that's it. That's the basic MOSFET current mirror. Thank you.